Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel with me, JP, here on Crypto Corner, a digital currency professional's production where gaming meets crypto. Anyways, guys, our topic today is going to be the ever expanding multiverse of the engine platform. But before I get into that, a quick disclaimer I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I say here should be taken as financial advice. Everything here is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Also, if you enjoy the content, a shameless plug here, please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our new topics and all of our deep dive videos. Also, you can check out our website, I'll leave a link in the description, at digitalcurrencypros.com, where you can keep up to date with all of our latest research as well as some of our new merch. Anyways, guys, once again, you're here with me, JP, and today our topic is the ever-expanding universe of the engine platform. So, there's been a lot of talk about Engine recently with the upcoming launch of JumpNet on April 6th. But what exactly is Engine? And how exactly can it be used for you? Well, I want to go over a bit of details about the platform, how it works, and where it's available, just so you can get a sense of it. So, let's dive in. First thing, Engine. What exactly is it? Well, Engine is a blockchain-based gaming platform that focuses on the development of NFTs. What are NFTs? Well, they're non-fungible tokens, and I'll quickly explain what that means. So a fungible token is something that's kind of like, say, regular money. If you have, say, five $1 notes and you trade them for a $5 bill, you know that your money has equal value and is exchanged equally even though it's changed form. A non-fungible token is more like something like a, a piece of art or a trading card. Think the Mona Lisa or rare holographic Charizard. These things are not easily tradable, where, for instance, a poster or a picture of that same thing is not worth its actual value. What matters is that you can prove it's authentic and the original. So, how do NFTs work? Well, they're fundamentally based on the blockchain, and you can check to see its digital signature, essentially. Each of these items is also infused with engine coin or whatever digital currency is being used. We're focusing on that at the moment. So how does this work exactly? Well, it's through a process called minting. So you can take, say, any sort of item, a sword, a, a new costume for your character, or even a new character in and of themselves, take these things and infuse them with engine coin at their inception. That makes them have actual value on the market where they can be traded or melted down for direct engine that can be put into your wallet. This also means that that engine coin is taken off the market, which increases the scarcity of the coin. Over time, as more players jump on the network, we can expect engine to continue to rise in price. Now, how exactly can this benefit players and even game developers? Well, as you know, the gaming industry is really huge and there's a lot of money to throw around. But one of the fundamental problems that seem to face a lot of these games, such as World of Warcraft is when you have in-game items that are being traded on black markets. And you, hopefully, if you played these games, you know what I'm talking about. Some players put hundreds and hundreds of hours to get items and then will try to sell these items on black markets, which can often result in players' accounts being banned. In that case, all of your items, everything that you spend so long to get, disappears because Blizzard owns your account and they own all the items in the game. NFTs offer true item ownership to players, meaning no matter what, those items remain in your wallet. You can trade them on the market, and in some cases, even take them into other games and use them to, say, adventure in an entirely new way. Now, how does this work? Well, everything based on the engine platform is using the Unity game engine. And it is basically a really simple, a way for developers to create blockchain-based games without needing to know how to program blockchain. It also allows basically to create like a multiverse between game developers. So if you have say a gun or an outfit in one game or even a character, you can go around and gain experience or bring those weapons and items over to multiple games. This is also very exciting because when you're trading NFTs, there's something that you can build in as a developer that allows you to gain royalties every time that NFT is traded. So if you make a rare item in game and it's traded multiple times by players, 
a little percentage of those will go back to the developer. This is a big deal because it means that you can develop all kinds of items and not worry so much about players taking them onto the market. This is beneficial for players and developers. Money can go to players' pockets and a small percentage going back to the, the developer to help them develop new features and better games in the future. Now, how is this going to take off exactly? Well, as you know, if you have gotten into Engine at all, the amount of games on the platform is growing consistently. And I'm going to focus a little bit on Android today because that seems to be one of the more underdeveloped markets at the moment. How can these royalties be used in the long term to aid in new game development? Well, it's actually pretty interesting. You can create NFTs and release these items before the game itself is even released. So you can actually use in-game items as promotional material for your games. This is pretty exciting and would prompt a lot more players to sign up for early access. Imagine a special weapon that only you could get if you sign up for early access that can be tradable on the market as an NFT before the game even releases. You can understand why this would create a lot of hype over new game development and also fundamentally change the way that new games make money and raise funds to fund future projects. So right now, especially when it comes to free games on mobile, the main way that they make money is through advertisements. But if you're taking a small percentage of royalties from the trading of NFTs, you could theoretically entirely fund your game that way. So this could offer up a lot more free to play games where the developers are still making money where they can create even more advanced, even more interesting games in the future. This, I think, is really exciting. And I really think that this is where the future is headed. A big reason for that is if anyone's gonna be comfortable getting into digital currency and understand the value of in-game digital items, it's gonna be gamers. We're already used to using digital economies. Every game you've ever played whether it's Zelda, all through Pokemon, have some sort of digital economy. And we're all very comfortable with that. The idea of trading a different form of currency to game items that are only valuable to you, the player, and those in the player base is pretty comfortable for us. But also, it's not just about the games that we ourselves are playing. It's about all the games that are connected through the engine multiverse where all of a sudden, if you're finished playing something, it doesn't just mean that all those items go to waste, you can take them over to another game. And even if you stop playing entirely, you can still sell these NFTs. This allows gamers to get real value from their gaming without just having to say, stream on Twitch to make money. And I know that that's a very popular way for pro gamers and a very popular route for pro gamers to go down, but consider the fact that if you spent all these hours gathering items, that would have a real world value for you. I know for me, that's a big attractive feature of this platform. Now, don't get me wrong, Engine is still in its early stages. And one of the problems that a lot of people have had was the gas fees. This is essentially the fees it takes to transfer something like the ENJ coin over to Ethereum, over to the ERC 1155 token and back again and all the same sort of fees that it costs to melt down your NFTs to get your ENJ back. However, with the launch of JumpNet on April 6th, these will all go away and you can expect instant free transfer of money from ERC 1155 over to the ENJ over to Ethereum. This is a big deal and should open it up for a lot more developers to jump on the platform. We already know that Blizzard is having a look at this. And Microsoft and Samsung have already signed deals with the company. So you can expect some sort of AAA platform coming out in the near future. And for me, I think this will make all of the difference. All right, so on to the stuff about Android specifically. So one of the main things that you want to do first is you want to download the engine wallet onto your phone. Once you've done that, you'll see that you're able to access a huge number of altcoins all available for storage on their new wallet. You'll also be able to go and link all of the projects available on the engine platform to your wallet. So you can actually store your NFTs right there on your phone. So lately, I've been playing a very particular game called Force Night. Now, there are actually a few games from mobile on the engine platform that I'll mention that are pretty far in development, some of them a little further than others. So there's War for Ants, 
there's Blockchain Hodler, there's also Kingdom Carnage, and my personal favorite at the moment has been Force Knight. The reason is it's very easy to drop in and drop out of the game. There's a couple of options to have missions go on on your town hall that run even when you're not in the game. You can go and explore various dungeons with your ever-expanding team depending on what level you're on. And all of the items in game are NFTs. And as the game develops, hopefully the developers will allow for these NFTs to be traded between players on the market. Now there's also a variety of interesting features on that game itself which allows you to purchase different in-game items using ENJ coin and you can also trade that coin for gold or directly trade that gold for different sorts of gems that help your character level up and you to make new purchases such as new heroes and new items. So how will these games develop in the future? Where exactly are NFTs and the engine coin going? Well I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat for a quick second and we're going to have a conversation about where things can go in the future. Thank you. I'm in Australia. This is what a tinfoil hat looks like in Australia. <laughs> All right. So now let's enter what's possible. <laughs> so there's a lot that can happen with NFTs and I think there's a few things that maybe even the developers of these platforms haven't thought about. Now, I'm not trying to say that I know everything, but I do think there's some interesting developments that could happen. One of them is the possibility of NFTs being games in and of themselves. Now, I haven't seen anything particular like this, but I can very much see how this would benefit a lot of developers who say don't have a lot of current activity on their platforms. So I don't know if you've ever done anything like Steam dumpster diving, where you go through and you look at games that don't have a lot of reviews. Well, some of these games clearly need a boost. And what would be an interesting way of doing that? Well, if you make these games scarce. If you, say, had a game, like if you recall Silent Hill PT, the playable trailer. Once that game was taken off the PlayStation Store, people were selling their literal PlayStations with copies of this game on it because it was worth so much. Now imagine that scarcity for all kinds of games, except instead of needing to sell your entire system, you could trade the game itself as an NFT on the market. I could see this being pretty exciting, where you could have a super rare copy of something, say like a new Mario game or, or the newest Elder Scrolls, and it's a limited copy that can only be traded for a limited amount of time before it's taken off the market as an NFT. Developers would still make money off it from the royalties and players could stand to make quite a bit of money from their collectibles over time. This fuses two of my favorite things, collectibles and games. I know some of you may play certain trading card games and you already understand the value of having these physical items that gain value over time with their scarcity. But this is the first time that gamers would really have access to this with really specific copies of things not just in-game items, but possibly whole games in and of themselves that will gain value over time and have an actual intrinsic value in them because you get to play them once you have the thing. Now, where else could this go? Well, I think that as we see these growing digital economies emerge, you could see a lot more developers coming from places you wouldn't expect. What do I mean by this? Well, the ability to trade NFTs and in-game objects means that as games grow and the development of in-game objects is fairly simple to do, you could have companies begin to contribute more and more in the development of NFTs. So, for instance, you could have your favorite sports team releasing a jersey that you could actually wear in something silly, like a Call of Duty game. This is always pretty interesting and fun and has always been something the player base has usually done previously with modding, where the community would add things like skins from various different places just to change the game, change it up a bit, change how you look, make it a little more interesting, a little more fun. However, with the development of NFTs and the ability for anyone to develop an NFT and make it work in multiple games, you could basically create any sort of skin, any sort of item, and put it up on the market. 
And this is beneficial for your business as well as these individual games who want to have a greater variety of marketplace items that attract a larger player base. I could see this taking off in a variety of ways, especially with the advent of VR. Imagine putting on your VR headset, walking into your house and having all of your amazing trophies hanging on the wall there and each of them having real value that you could take them off and sell them on an open marketplace. Sci-fi sounding a little bit, I know, but I feel that this is right around the corner. There's a lot going on in the digital space at the moment. And as people lose more and more faith in what's going on with regular currency, they're looking for a place to put their money. Digital assets that are guaranteed in the blockchain have a huge benefit because they're not something that you can easily lose or easily destroy. They're there. They're going to stay there. And you know that they're authentic and completely unhackable. This is a big deal. This is going to change a lot of what's available in the NFT market. And I feel that gamers are perfectly situated to adopt this technology and bring it to its true fruition. Anyway, that's enough crazy tinfoil hat talk for me at the moment. Engine is a blockchain based gaming platform and its coin ENJ is available on Binance today for trade. If you want to get the Engine wallet, it's available for download on the Play Store or the Apple Store for your mobile phone, where you can link all of the different projects available on the Engine website and also trade your NFTs and store them on that very same wallet. I will be doing a video in deep dive of wallets in general, focusing on the Engine wallet specifically in an upcoming video. Now, I want to quickly point out that I haven't discussed any of the potential risks for projects like this. And that's because it's kind of unknown. Really, like any of these new coins or new projects, there's always a little bit of risk when you trade, and I want people to take that into account. However, I think personally that these NFTs and the engine platform specifically has a lot of potential, and I'm for sure keep it in my portfolio at all times. Anyways, guys. If you made it this far into the video, that was a lot of information. I just want to thank you so, so much. And please remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to keep up to date with all of our latest content. Also, if you want to check out our website at www.digitalcurrencypros.com, please do so. I'll leave a link in the description. All of our new merch will be available on there. And we'll also be doing some more research and blog posts to go more in depth into the engine platform and NFTs. If you want to start trading the ENJ coin today, please check out our referral link to Binance where you can get 10% off trading fees. And also I'll leave a link there for the engine platform itself so you can check out all the new games that come out as well as keep up to date on all the news there. All right, guys, thank you once again. You've been here with me, JP. This has been Crypto Corner, a digital currency professionals production. And I hope you have a great day. Keep it crypto, everybody. Mm -hmm.